Hey Tosi, how's it going? I'm good. Uh, how are you doing? I'm super good. I'm just about to go head off to Crazy Aid. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you get a ticket? I'm still waiting for my ticket. Where's my ticket? Where's my management pony ticket? I have no idea. <laughs> but I'll ask Paul. Paul, um... Oh, you know Paul Armstrong. Well, I gotta write to that guy because he owes me a ticket. Well, I, I, I will ask him. You mention it. You make sure you do. Okay, let's roll the segment interview. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. Today we have a fantastic guest with Paul Armstrong, who is the executive director of the Crazy Ace Film Society. I got that right in one go. You did. Welcome to the space station. Thank you so much. Crazy Ace is going on pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah we just yeah. Uh, completed the films, uh, got through three days of production, five days of post, and they're all uh, packaged up, but uh, looking forward to screening them at the big gala. Here they are. I don't know if you can see that. If you've just seen Glare, so I'll do this. But yeah, Crazy Ace already all bound up, beautiful stuff. Um, that sounds amazing. Just in case people at home don't know about Crazy Aids for some reason, explain mm -hmm. to them a little bit about what it's about, what happens, and, and your role in it all. Well, it's an eight-day filmmaking challenge. So basically, we have people that pitch um, a story idea in a video format, five minutes. We then narrow down those five-minute video pitches down to 40 people that pitch in person, and then from there down to 12 that uh, write a script. And then the judges pick uh, their favorite six scripts, and then those advance to getting being get uh, filmed uh, or they advance to the um, uh, production stage a month later, where they're given a thousand dollars of cash and about twenty thirty thousand dollars of services and uh, equipment. Wow! For for loan, of course. Uh, yeah, the whole community comes together and helps them make these films, uh, and then they have five days of post. Uh, and then a couple weeks later, they screen at the biggest uh, single night screening event in Vancouver. Um, last year, we had over 1,700 people at the screening and over 1,300 at the after party at Science World. So it's the biggest single gathering uh, for independent short film in Vancouver each year. So it's, uh, we make the films and then we screen them. So if you're in the industry, if you haven't heard of it, well, now you have. <laughs> that is, that's you absolutely Can't amazing. Can't say I've never heard of it now. <laughs> that's for sure. And, and so your role as uh, the executive producer. Oh, yeah, executive producer. director. Yeah. yeah. Director, so, yeah, sorry. well, executive director of the society that uh, operates of the, the films, event. Yeah. yeah. And then executive producer on the six films that we make each year. So my duty is to uh, raise money from all the sponsors in town and across Canada to be able to uh, put on the event and give some of that money to the teams. Uh, pay your staff, so part of it's the fundraising side of it uh, and running the society because we do other events during the year as well. We have a couple other screenings. We do an event at Whistler. We have a screening there that we help with and uh, and then the other role is to make the film. So putting on workshops and getting judges and mentors. Each team teamed up with mentors. Wow, that's they have, fantastic. They have workshops yeah. like writing workshops, directing, cinematography, uh, so yeah, they get trained in filmmaking. That's part of the purpose of Crazy Eights is to train people in filmmaking. That's why it was founded actually originally by the Directors Guild of Canada oh. to train originally directors, but everyone else that is required to make a film. Yeah, they founded it in 1999. Yeah, is okay. Toasty getting a ticket this year? Unfortunately, no. We, oh, okay, it, yeah. We're so packed, we just can't spare the room for... I'll tell him I know, after. I'll be disappointed. But yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I'll make sure you get home safe first, <laughs> okay? okay? Yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. So this mentoring thing, that's, that sounds really interesting. Uh, does that, that happen pre-production, or does that happen during the year, or how does that... Um, during the go? year, well, we have an overall director mentor, Alan Harmon, who's mm -hmm. also the chairman of the DGC. He's the overall director mentor, so he... He puts on a director mentor workshop for the teams where they workshop a scene. Uh, and then each team also gets a director mentor. And actually, Ellen was a director mentor on one of the films as well this year, but we had other director mentors like Amanda Tapping uh, from Stargate. Um, oh, yes, yes. Jonathan Tamuz, who ended up actually first ADing as well as director mentoring one of the films. Uh, so we get like industry people that are very experienced and come on board. Jason Bork was a director mentor. So we get. Uh, well-established people, then we assign them to a film that we think suits what they've done in the past. And um, some of them attend set as well, just a little bit of guidance, but 
basically it's up to the director to make their film, but mm -hmm. they need a bit of guidance maybe to start with, so they'll maybe show up on the first day and offer some words of advice. <laughs> yeah, like don't yeah. forget to show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, yeah. Well, they have to show up because they, uh, if they want their money, we give them their money that morning and then they go off and film, so right. they show up. A thousand dollars worth of McDonald's yeah. later. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Well, a lot of it does go to craft service. I <laughs> bet. Yeah, yeah, well, you got to feed the army. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. And you're going to, we have a, a bit of a clip to yeah. show everyone? Yeah, we've got the behind the scenes. So each year we go around to each set and interview the filmmakers and get behind the scenes footage. So we're going to uh, take a look a little bit behind the scenes of Crazy. It's 2016. Fantastic. Roll the Wi Fi. Action! This is bonkers. <laughs> Seems impossible, but somehow we're doing it. Just killed a kid with a bus, so things are looking up. I gotta run. I'm Shauna Johansson, and I am the director of Flying, and it's kind of a what to expect when you're not expecting. The totally unsexy side of sex when sex is just for making babies. So it's not hot and bothered sex, it's, it's bothered, bothered sex. I have a lot of friends who are trying to have kids, I was looking around and going, how come nobody's talking about this? How come nobody's telling these stories? I am also in the middle of a play right now. I just came from doing the matinee of the play that I wrote, Common Grace at Pacific Theatre, so I hopped off set to do the play, came back while my husband took over as second unit director for two shots, and now I'm taking back over as director. I wouldn't recommend doing this. It's been a little bit bananas, but it, it can be done. I'm Patrick Curry, and my film is called Meet Cute. It is the world's first bisexual rom-com, and you'll have to see it to figure out what that means. It's important for me to tell this story because it's the most underrepresented group of the LGBTQ community. The lack of visibility is actually a cause of a great deal of pain and suffering, and I think we should just start being honest about who we love and how we love. I tried to put some fog into the church, if you can see that here, and the fire alarm went off. So we had to wait a little while to figure it out, and I think they I'm not going to even ask for how it stops, but... And cut! I'm Matt Campbell, and we are in a grocery store shooting an action movie. A film about a guy who arrives at the checkout line realizing he's forgot the most important item to impress some new friends. Uh, by trade, I am a greensman. I'm a redneck set decorator. I build sets on movies like Godzilla, Warcraft. I want to make this film because it's, it's damn funny. And these guys are hilarious just watching them, them work. I'll go first. My name is uh, Chris Wilson, and I'm a writer and uh, a creator, I guess, on this um, uh, Crazy Eight shoot. Hi, I'm Peter Carlone. I'm also the co writer of the Crazy Eight shoot. Are you stealing peanut butter? I wanted to be a stuntman when I was younger. I used to climb 25 feet up trees, and then my brother would chop them down with me in the tree because it was fun. No one said I was a smart kid, all right? I flip cars and drive vehicles through walls with stunt guys. This to me, I was like, this, uh, this is good. Have you seen my demo rail? I'm Shannon Cooley. I'm the writer director of A Family of Ghosts. Action! This is about a young woman, Abigail, whose grandparents are ghosts, and only she can see or hear them. And they mean well, they're very protective, but they meddle in her life and they drive away the man she loves. So I grew up riding horses and I had horses in the past and for me it's just a lifelong love. So for me it was really important to tie in these horses into the script. Because it's set in 1910, a big challenge have, has been the costumes and the set design. Until we get that first shot, I cannot relax at all. Cut! Well the house is a bit of a mess, so <laughs> finding uh, writing utensils is hard. Finding weed and beer is pretty easy. 
My name is Joel Ashton McCarthy, and this is the wonderful set of I Love You So Much, It's Killing Them. It's a romantic love story told through the eyes of a completely messed up sociopathic killer. It's just dark, it's gritty, and I'm trying to tell a light-hearted story in a really dark world, and I think that's what's fun about it. And we're at the Weston Bayshore International Suite, and this is like the place where like, the Rolling Stones do cocaine between shows. This is a very exciting place to be. I think it's my first film without dick jokes in a while, so. Let's do one more, cut. Uh, my name is Jesse Lupini, and I am the director and co-writer of Iteration One. Iteration One is a story about a woman named Anna who wakes up in this strange white room and she has to solve a series of bizarre puzzles to see if she can escape. You know, it's a fun sci-fi story, but it's also like an intensely personal allegory, I guess. It's my therapy session, this whole short film, so I get to be me. <laughs> About a year ago, I moved to Vancouver and started at Vancouver Film School, and I'm actually not done. I actually graduate from that program really soon, and now here I am on set directing this show. <laughs> I originally started writing this script thinking that it would be an easy film to shoot, but we're at a point now where like, it's pretty clear that this is not an easy film to shoot. We've got visual effects, we have to build a set in a really short period of time. It's, it's insane. I don't understand people who tell me that they get bored. I don't know what that's like. We wanted to do Crazy Eights because we were done making films in our little sandbox and we wanted to expand to the bigger industry. And we thought it was the perfect opportunity. I want Crazy Eights to help make this because it's the best contest in the world. I've never heard of any other city that has a film community that will come together and offer their help for free. This is the busiest Vancouver's ever been for filming, and we still have an incredible crew. And I've seen it grow over the last 17 years to what it is now, and the support that you get from the Crazy Eights team is, you just can't beat it. talking fannies, there'd better be talking fannies. <laughs>